Good morning, good morning. I hope you're all well. So showing my chops in your lap this morning. So I've started talking a little bit around our subconscious mind and how our subconscious mind is normally trying to keep us safe if we're, when we're holding on to extra weight. So I wanted to come in this morning and just talk about that the title of this live is how our conscious mind is has a really good knack at making it exciting when we're in that weight loss and also living in a smaller body. And I just wanted to come on and talk to you a little bit about that. Hi Jacqueline, lovely to have you on. So, the conscious mind has a really good way of fooling us that going on yet another diet or weight loss is an exciting process. But for most of us, from a subconscious perspective, it really isn't. And I'm gonna share a little bit of my own sort of personal experience and I, I did something a good few years ago that really started to highlight this for me because quite often we get so consumed in the conscious aspect of our weight in terms of losing weight, um, eating less and exercising. But actually, something I started to realise was the cycle of losing weight itself and actually living in a smaller body and how from a subconscious perspective that actually created quite a lot of feelings of feeling unsafe. It wasn't like a conscious thing because my conscious mind was so consumed by being that smaller body, feeling okay, feeling acceptable. Diet culture really promotes those kinds of feelings of not enoughness, doesn't it? And something I did a few years ago, I did like a timeline of my weight. If you've ever not, if you've done this, great. If you've never done this, it's a really, hi Lisa, lovely to have you on. It's a really powerful exercise to do. So I sat down and I basically plotted my weight when it's been at its highest, when it's been like quite steady, when it's been at its lowest. And from sort of birth until I was, what, 45 or whatever I was when I did that, I kind of joined up all those dots and I had a lovely graph of like my weight that represented in picture format my weight. So when it had been at its highest, when it had been at its lowest, all re relevant for my weight history. And I had this chart in front of me and I just looked at those, of course I got obsessed with the high ones at first and focused on the times when I'd been heaviest. And then I started to look at when my weight had been at its lowest. I was really interested because I started to really make some connections. And one of the, it was, a, it was such an awakening moment for me. What I started to notice that most of mine in my adult life, most of my significant weight gains and weight losses have tied in to relationships okay so until my relationship now i've been with gary for 13 years and that's had its ups and downs but prior to that i've had very very disordered relationships and when i started to look at my timeline of my weight history there was real synergy what i mean by that is the times when my weight was lower okay there was definite connection to when I had, I was coming towards the end of a dysfunctional relationship or the relationship had ended. Every relationship I've been in, apart from with Gary, they've been unfaithful to me. So there was this definite link between relationships ending, them being unfaithful, that really reinforcing my insecurities and my sense of not feeling good enough. And that triggering off the conscious mind saying what well, I need to lose weight partly because I needed to get back back out there and find a new man this was the world I was stuck in but also those deep rooted beliefs that the reason why my relationships hadn't worked was down to my weight it didn't really make any logic sense but that's what was going on at the time and if anyone's been in that world you'll totally understand the power that our body relationship and our our weight had over distorting our thinking so that was really interesting because what I started to notice was my weight would come down when I was single again. Part of that was the distress of the relationship ending, me getting caught up in those beliefs about myself, but also part of that, my beliefs that I needed to be slimmer in order to get a new boyfriend. So that was a time that my weight was at its lowest. So you can start to see when we actually start to look at that process of losing weight and living in a smaller body, it's not all like exciting and great stuff. You know, yes, it's nice to get into smaller clothes and all of that stuff. But actually, for me, there was this like real deep rooted sense of not enoughness and, and, and stress and emotional turbulence that was also running alongside 
the process of losing weight. So when we actually start to dig, dig a bit deeper and understand our food and weight relationship, for me, as I was going through that weight loss process and the desire to be slimmer, it had a very strong subconscious association with emotional turbulence, pain, feelings of not good, of not enoughness. So conscious mind is excited and wants to lose the weight, but subconscious has this really strong association with instability, unsafe, um, harsh, critical. So it's a really unpleasant experience for the subconscious. So then when you start to think about why when we put ourselves on a diet do we actually have this resistance, you can totally see how our subconscious actually holds these beliefs about the experience of losing weight and how it's quite unsafe and quite unpleasant. Does this make sense? Um, Conversely to that, as I started to look at me gaining weight, what I realized was again, my weight gains correlated with me getting into a new relationship. And because of my own insecurities around trusting men, trusting people, men in particular, I would find some, meet a new guy, we'd start dating, everything would be cool. And then as we started to get closer and you know, stronger feelings started to come into the mix. So my subconscious started to resist it and back away from it and start to not trust the relationship, not trust that person. I'd be starting to look for signs that they were untrustworthy. And of course, this was creating a lot of emotional distress for me. And so I would find myself turning to food. So I have a real, if I had the timeline here, I'd show you it because there's these definite points of dips and then increasing over like a two or three year period. And when I stepped back and really looked at that, I can see that correlation between me being in distress because a relationship had ended. So all that emotional um, disturbance that I has got connected to the weight loss process, that's not to mention the actual distress that going on a diet actually creates. As much as we try to tell ourselves it's exciting, you know, for most of us, it's actually quite isolating and lonely. So we've got all of these like negative associations with weight loss. It's no wonder when we try to do it that our subconscious is constantly resisting it. And we, we then label it, don't we? We judge ourselves, we tell ourselves we've got no willpower or we're failures. But actually what it is, is your subconscious is trying to keep you safe. And so for me, it was also the opposite way that I gained weight because I was in a relationship. And because of my anxious attachment, I didn't trust the people that I w was with. Did that change in me, then push them to go and do what they did? It's really fascinating when we start unpicking and exploring this. But the key message that I want you to kind of think about is think about your own times when you've lost weight in the past, the process of losing weight weight but also living in that smaller body and how might your subconscious actually associate with those experiences what was going on for you around the times where you've been dieting or been slimmer has there been some kind of emotional trauma going on for you like me i've just come out of relationships maybe you know it's that whole seeing photos of yourself and that's a really strong impetus to actually do something physical about it but actually what's going on in the subconscious is often based in fear, um, a feeling of not good enough. And so we kind of got this conflict going on. The conscious mind is trying to be excited about it, but the subconscious actually feels very, very differently. I'd really invite you guys, if you haven't done it, grab a piece of paper and just, just plot your weight history throughout your life so where it, and you define whether at what point you you feel you were higher medium and low and just plot it and you'll have a chart and then step back and just start thinking about what was going on around that time a lot of women like lose weight for go for their wedding makes total sense doesn't it actually but again it's that almost when we look beneath the desire to lose weight often there's that fear of looking like bigger in photos and things like that so we're creating this like judgment of ourselves so have a go at that exercise you might actually see some really interesting patterns coming out for you and when you start to notice these patterns like i did it's such important awareness and understanding if you've got any questions on this reach out if there's anything that's like been triggered or stimulated for you or resonates with you from this live come and talk to me because sometimes these little exercises are so so powerful have a good day guys